The Vidal Speaks Podcast. So, you know, um, my story is I was a pro golfer and I got poisoned from the pesticides on the course. I mm -hmm. am not clear if mercury or some form of mercury is used in pesticides because mm -hmm. there's so much crap in those things. It's hard to say, yeah. especially yeah. golf courses, because they're, you know, made to look like plastic and perfect kind of. And so they use a lot of chemicals and I got so sick and people, doctors couldn't help me and I had to figure out how to mm -hmm. do it myself. So I came across, you know, just detoxing in general, just more thinking, I got to get these pesticides out of my liver and kidneys. I got to get myself well. And so that's been my journey because my, my whole thing was about being poisoned, although I wasn't specifically saying it was mercury, but I'm really mm -hmm. in interested because when I learned uh, about the hair tests and you learn how minerals get displaced by mercury, meaning that right. mercury, your body thinks the mercury in your body is zinc or something. And then right, it right. uses the mercury because, and then you're zinc deficient because there's no room for both. So, right. so the minerals get pushed out and it's interesting. What you said is so common when you see mercury toxic people, they think they have a mineral deficiency, but it's because their body can't get those minerals because it's using the mercury kind mm -hmm. of in place of the mineral. And as you right. start Super detoxing, yeah. right, as you start detoxing, you start pushing out the mercury. But the big issue, and this is what I'm, this is why I'm so interested in talking to you because my passion is detox. I love, I, and mm -hmm. it's not that I love it. It's you can't be well without it. And you cannot live in this world today healthy if you don't know how to detox, period. And what I love about right. what I do with homeopathy, and I don't know how familiar you are with homeopathy, but mm -hmm. what I... What I believe in since back in the 1700s when homeopathy was invented by Samuel Hahnemann, then the mm -hmm. French learned uh, how to kind of support, I don't know if you want to call it detox or support, but it's like, you know, getting your terrain stronger so that your body can get prepared for, let's say, a constitutional remedy. So mm -hmm. it, they, they did things like kidney remedies just to get the kidneys working. And it's like, and then if you can't excrete, if your if your functions, your if your excretion channels or your elimination channels are not working, you can go buy the most expensive product, do a juice detox, do a fast, do whatever. And in the end, you can't get anything out. You're going to get yourself pretty darn sick and dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people they write to me on my podcast and they tell me stories of how sick they were. And then they went and did like a big Corella thing or a chelator mm -hmm. thing. And they now are in bed and they can't move and they're sicker than ever before. Because mm -hmm. if you don't open up the channels of elimination at mm -hmm. the same time that you're pushing mercury out, I had that experience doing some mercury stuff and I could feel like I was moving it out. And then you start feeling like I was outside of myself. Like I could almost feel like I could hear myself talking and I felt so strange. And then I realized I'm, I'm just reabsorbing it and I need to work on my liver and kidneys, especially like you said, the kidneys just to help get it excreted out. Cause if you're dumping too fast, you can feel really sick. I think there's a part of that you got to go through probably anyway, but you really have to focus. So when I help people with detox, I really work hard with homeopathic remedies supporting their kidneys, let's say first, or then their blood or then their liver or then their bowel or whatever it is to help those channels of elimination. Because if you don't get those things open, you, you aren't detoxing. Right. Absolutely. hundred percent. Again, uh, in regards to the golf course, absolutely. I've read specifically that golf courses will use or besides pesticides and fungicides that will contain heavy metals. So there's no doubt about that. Now, they've since outlawed it in the United States. I don't know where else, but the United States didn't use that mercury in, in uh, these specifically fungicides. And they, use, they used to use a, a fungicide coating on seeds, which has caused a lot of death in different areas. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is the, the, the diabolical nature of mercury is that when you get it into your body, and you're not excreting it fast. And some people are fast excretors, others are not. And it has to do with methylation, as well as the production of glutathione in the body. 
what happens once it gets stored? Well, it gets stored in the kidney and liver, which are the two organs responsible for getting rid of mercury. Now, once it starts damaging those organs, well, then you have problems dumping the rest of the toxins that you're continually taking in, whether it be from air, the water, which you get a lot of aluminum from water because of aluminum sulfate and, and, and water treatment uh, and foods and, and so on. And, and then you just start building up more and more toxins in the liver. And it's not going to function until you get rid of the mercury. So getting your liver and, and kidney in order before you engage the rest of the dumping that's going on, which has a lot to do with, I think, intestine. Uh, you know, if you talk, talk to about the work of uh, Dr. Chris Shade, he'll talk about getting rid of the toxins in the gut and cleaning up the gut so you have proper elimination because some of the mercury that's attached to glutathione may recirculate through a hepatopodal vein and get redistributed through the body. So that's some of the deals why, why some of the part where they want to you to take intestinal binders, the chlorella, the spirulina, because it'll hang on to the mercury preventing redistribution. And then you're going to have to be having a bowel movement twice a day to get rid of the methylmercury and 80% of all the methylmercury in the body is supposed to go out through the gastrointestinal tract. Now, people that are inflamed with, you know, uh, non-functioning liver and a, and, and a non-functioning kidney, uh, if they have that kind of heavy-duty inflammation, uh, they're not producing glutathione. So reversing the inflammation often means changing the diet, supplementing, figuring out the mineral deficiencies, getting rid of the mercury. And it's a complex process that's very difficult for, for a person to do on their own because Let's face it, one of the big problems of redistribution of mercury is brain fog, the lack of short-term memory, fatigue. And how are you going to remember to take all these things and do all these processes if you can't function normally? Well, so it causes, yeah, it causes and a lot of problems. And there's so much information out there. It's so confusing. Most people are more confused than anything. You can read one article and the very next click is someone saying the opposite and it's easy and this product and this product. And I know a lot of people that get themselves more sick trying to do it on their own without any help. And uh, right. this, this is something you can't mess around with. Mercury is something very serious. And that's why I was so happy because shortly after I interviewed Dr. Cutler on my show, he was kind enough to give me a long interview. And I did two episodes with him. And about, I think, less than six months later, he died. And that's wow. been, I think that's still my most watched episode because it's a big deal. There's a lot of people searching and they eventually get there. These really sick people eventually get to the idea that maybe it's mercury. So tell us a little bit about what were your symptoms? I'm uh, d When you said anxiety, you maybe in the beginning didn't relate that to the mercury. You just thought it was maybe insomnia. But now looking right. back, you can see that was probably part of your mercury toxicity. Did you mm -hmm. have any of the other symptoms like rashes or any of the brain fog? Did you have any of that or was it pretty much anxiety and insomnia? Yeah, I attributed at that point in time the insomnia to adrenal overload causing anxiety, but it was really a uh, disruption of mineral transport. I used to have these horrible headaches in the afternoon, and when I detox mercury to a certain point, they were gone. I haven't, I don't even know if I've ever had a headache since then. Uh, so that was another thing. So insomnia, anxiety, eventually hardcore headaches uh, that went away. Um, I didn't have any rashes or any of these other uh, things that you might associate, maybe some hair loss over time, a lot of fatigue, a lot of chronic fatigue. I'll tell you one thing I did that was wrong early on years ago. I was growing coriander because I heard it was an herb that could help with mercury toxicity. And I, and I was eating small handfuls of it raw in the morning. And it is an extractor. I'm not so much sure about a chelator. You read different reports, but I, it can extract mercury out of the body, that's for sure. And it's kind of dangerous. And since then, I obviously realized that I made a mistake. So what happened was by the afternoon, I had such horrible brain fog that I couldn't really function. And so, you know, it's a good idea to stay away from coriander. It's not a good thing to take for a person who's mercury toxic because it really pulls out a lot of mercury into the blood. And boy, you just suffer because the body becomes overwhelmed. If there, you know, there's just not enough glutathione. There's, you know, maybe your kidney liver is not up to the task of dumping all that mercury out of the body. 
And uh, one of the things I recommend that has really helped me is the sweat therapies yeah. uh, that I've done a couple of days a week at least. And that really moves a lot of trash out of the body. Yeah. And it kicks and it also, in, it, you know, incites the kidney to start dumping more and the liver to start dumping more. And I really think it kickstarts the, the detox process where people, where the whole body starts moving trash out through all the processes available and uh, you know, it has such a long history, sweat therapies for, for sure. years and years and years. For sure. I mean, so that I, was one of the first things I invested in was I have an infrared sauna in my house because, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not that expensive. And for the for the work that they do and to have it mm -hmm. right at your house, it, it's like the, it's still to this day, I always say that's the best thing I ever bought. It helped when I first started getting in there, my sweat, mm -hmm. I didn't when I would play golf and sweat. I, I didn't really have a smell to my sweat. When I started getting mm -hmm. into infrared sauna, it smelled oh, yeah. like ammonia, ammonia. Right. And then right. like there was a period of time for like three months, my towel would smell like ammonia and suddenly I, it's gone. It went away. So you can, you can tell when, and when Lloyd, my partner, he had to get a surgery and he was on before the surgery on morphine. When he started getting in the sauna afterwards, he was sweating out all that Vicodin and he would get high yeah. again just from sweating it out. Right. So it just right, shows you how much stuff comes out. Yeah, that stuff is stored in the liver. When it comes back out again, uh, you can actually feel the intoxication because it's not all of it's processed. So some of it's stored in the liver. The liver does one amazing job. It's the biggest site for glutathione production and it stores a lot of the toxins. So when you start start detoxing, you, you get rid of trash. At the same time, uh, you allow the liver to start begin doing its job. And I'm a big advocate of liposomal glutathione. Uh, and liposomal vitamin C because they protect the body from the oxidation, the ROS, reactive oxygen species. And um, the liposomal glutathione obviously gets into the blood and bypasses the, the stomach. And then it starts attaching to some of these heavy metals and other, other toxins in the body and pushes it through the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, cleaning up the intestine really is, is a lot about the diet. I recommend 80% vegetable diet. There's a lot of antifungal foods. You know, you have your ginger and your garlics and so on. So I recommend those. And, and of course, the, the intestine, the lining of the intestine oftentimes is a sink for mercury and a sink for other heavy metals. I don't know if you probably read the, the work of Hal Huggins, who was, you know, he's one of them 80s guys that uh, was a dentist and was into the detox therapies and he was even into the Gershon, Gerson, sorry, yeah. Gerson therapy. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that. That's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic. And uh, so you when you clean up the gut, you replace the bad bacteria and get rid of that fungal overload. You know, he said, Hal Huggins stated that if a person could not get over the fungal overload in the gut, that they had a mercury problem. And the mercury in the body really prevented the immune system as identifying the fungal overload in the gut and getting rid of it and sort of keeping it in check. As you know, candida is a regular part of the intestine, but when it gets to be too much, possibly, yeah. possibly you, you take uh, antibiotics and it cleans out the good bacteria. Well, when you have that bad bacteria and you have the fungal overload, those bad bacteria and the fungal overload change methylmercury into different forms, making it difficult to actually get it out of the gastrointestinal tract. So when they say clean up the intestine and clean up the gut, what they're referring to is not only by getting rid of the trash, but also to bring in some of the good bacteria, which aid the detoxification of mercury and allow, you know, more bowel movements to keep the gastrointestinal tract gastro intestinal tract flowing so that you're constantly getting rid of that bound mercury that's attached to the glutathione. And uh, by studying Dr. Chris Shade over years, uh, you know, you're, you listen to him talk about the people that are good excretors. Well, the, the people that are good excretors are the ones that can really get rid of the mercury as they're taking it in. Their glutathione kicks into production. They upregulate uh, their genes. They produce the glutathione, they bind it, and they get rid of it. Uh, there's a certain number of people, maybe 30% that are okay to these toxifiers. They may get sick, they may get not. And then somewhere around 30% of the people that are poor 
detoxifiers that don't produce the necessary glutathione to get rid of those heavy metals. And if you, I'm sure you've read a book by uh, Dr. Ben Lynch called uh, Dirty Genes, same similar thing. You're not methylating, you're not making methyl groups, you have a hard time detoxifying, uh, you have a hard time attaching these heavy metals to a carrier and removing them around the body through the liver, through the gastrointestinal tract, uh, and out with the gastrointestinal tract, out with the regular waste every day. So cleaning up the gut, moving out that stuff regularly, increasing uh, liposomal glutathione. Now, you mentioned that you're a vegan, and we know that the vegetables contain 64 times the amount of antioxidants and typically way more glutathione in vegetables than any other source, something like 35 milligrams a day. I think you can get from vegetables is the average amount. So a vegetarian diet or vegan diet, high in vegetables, automatically increases antioxidants and increases the glutathione. And when you're increasing the antioxidants, you're upregulating the genes for producing glutathione, which is an NRF protein. I won't go into that. That's a long story. But the same thing will be told to you by Dr. Ben Lynch when he talks about uh, increasing the methyl groups, turning on the genes to produce methyl groups. You're eating uh, leafy greens, which produce, which will give you uh, methylfolate. Okay, and this is going to provide methyl groups to kickstart the glutathione. You're drinking a lot of water. You're dumping a lot of toxins. The one of, another thing that uh, you'll hear uh, Dr. Shea talk about is that uh, getting rid of endotoxins associated with mold and, and fungal overload in the gut. And the taking in of endotoxins into the body creates an inflammatory condition, which prevents basically making the, the a certain amount of glutathione that you need to, to detox these heavy metals. So it may come down to getting rid of a certain amount of trash so that you can reduce inflammation, so that you can produce the glutathione to get rid of the heavy metals. The Vidal Speaks Podcast.